Hello everybody, my name is Dimitri. I'm co-founder at Inciproco. Uh, I have over 20 years of experience in video games, AAA, real-time and non-real-time rendering. And uh, over six years now working on developing advanced technologies for reconstructing PBR materials and creating very photorealistic assets. In this set of tutorials will discuss various aspects of how we use our technology, how we scan different props, different tips and tricks, and um, setting up the rig, configuring all the software, doing all the calibration, and it's mainly intended for people in studios who already got our rigs and just want to get more familiar with it, or people that are thinking about trying to use it. So, um, as you can see here, to start with, we'll be talking about scanning um, as an example one of the props in this case it's an octopus um, it's a it's an interesting prop in the sense that it has a lot of metallic and colored metallic surfaces it has shiny parts it has classical um, dielectrics um, it has a lot um, uh, geometry that's creates a lot of occlusions and quite complex so that's also a good case it has dark parts, it has bright parts, so it's a very good test case to test and everything out. We'll talk about special tools that help a lot during photogrammetry and structural light reconstruction processes, how you clean and deal with all your stuff, how you calibrate, calibrate colors, setting up the cameras, working with lenses, uh, working with turntables, FPMs, fast polarization modulators, using chrome bolts for calibration, our um, hardware to control all different aspects and parts of the rig. So uh, let me clean this up a little bit and we'll start from the beginning. This goes there, that goes there. So and We'll start with the camera itself. We'll be using full frame Sony Alpha 7R4. It's a great digital camera. One thing when working with um, photometry, and that's the main technique that we use for reconstruction, is the fact that we have to take thousands and thousands of pictures. And one thing that's different between regular photogrammetry and photometry is those thousands of images they add up very quickly and most of the digital cameras with um, mechanical shutter can survive 100,000, 200,000, 3, okay, 500,000 actuations but that's nothing, that's 100 or 200 props so we cannot use mechanical shutters for this reason we use uh, continuous light sources emitting light diodes, custom that we um, manufacture for specifically for our rig. Uh, we use electronic shutter only mode on the camera. In addition to that, we shoot pretty much everything in JPEG with um, uh, in many times not even the highest quality um, because in all these processes the quality of a single image is not that important when you have thousands of them. And on top of that, we would use uh, things like um, S curves um, and um, sine curves, uh, shooting everything in log space. Um, that basically, um, in case of Sony, in case of camera, in our documentation, we have special tutorials on setups that describe what to do it. But basically, in this case, it's picture profile. It's based on picture profile five, and um, uh, we can go later through all the stuff there. For the most time, uh, for the most part, we would be also using manual uh, manual uh, focus. So you focus once, make sure that everything is in frame, and then you keep going. So um, in, in addition to that, we'll be shooting on SD card. It's also possible to connect it directly to APC and um, transfer all the images directly. The only problem is that a typical JPEG image would be around 20 or 30 megabytes, 
but the um, connectivity here even though it's USB type C that we have in this camera in practice it's around USB 2.0 transfer, transfer speed so um, it will not be able to keep up um, with the camera transferring all the data but it certainly is possible to use it that way um, other than that um, I think there's not much on the camera side um, in terms of the lens we most of our scans um, and in on most production we use prime lenses uh, the reason is that uh, when you um, when you uh, want to get the best out of your lens it's a lot easier from engineering standpoint to um, design something for very specific parameters other than trying to cover the whole range another thing that um, uh, we care about in when doing technical photography like this that's different from regular regular art or um, other types of landscape photography is we care about depth of field so when we scan an object we want to make sure that if it's focused on the front we want to make sure that there is enough um, depth of field um, and everything is as sharp as possible in that range so for that reason usually we would be using f-stops starting like f11 13 16 18 is the maximum 22 is probably the worst case so for that reason most of the lenses that claim like f 1.8 for the most part we don't care about that um, because for our purposes none of that is usually useful a lot of cameras and lenses would claim that the, the bokeh effect how good it is and so on and so forth again for this purpose it's it's not relevant at all um, in other lenses that are more expensive also the focusing speed is important again for our case it's not important at all and for that reason we would usually have you know, a set of lenses try them out at different distances at different focal distances and um, different f-stops and see for specific applications what performs the best and for that we'll have usually in this case uh, 49 millimeter lens we would also use lenses that with slightly uh, larger aperture uh, for macro photography um, something along these lines that's that has even smaller opening but the quality in many ways is superior than what we have here in some cases when you absolutely have to use something larger in zoom lens it's possible to use uh, lenses uh, like these ones with a much larger opening however when we do all the photography we use cross polarized lighting and the way to control that is to use FPMs or uh, mechanical polarizers so basically light sources are polarized then we put filter on the camera and uh, that way we're able to do cross polarization very quickly to separate different lighting components there mainly to separate diffuse from specular and in general more view dependent lighting components from less view dependent in this case uh, we build this custom FPMs that uh, could be attached for a variety of different lenses with this sort of um, uh, adapter rings the best way to do it before you even put anything on the rig is to first attach the adapter for your specific uh, lens and filter diameter and then after that attach put it on the rig and then attach the uh, the filter and then that goes into our sync boxes that has integrated LED drivers it has eight channels two channels for driving different um, filters two outputs one input for triggering 12 volt uh, 10 amp power supply USB and it has wireless control where we can control uh, other devices as well as you can see for this case uh, for this lens even though the maximum diameter of this filter is 5 by 5 centimeters 
but for uh, there are many lenses that uh, work without any issues with that and uh, as I showed you some of them they work fine but in cases when you absolutely have to use something like what I've shown here this uh, much larger openings we use uh, and we support mechanical polarizer out of the box tilt uh, one so you can attach it to your lens and we can directly control it wirelessly without any issues um, it's obviously mechanical so it makes some noises it takes some time to rotate but if you have to use it then there is an option to do that as well another thing while we're still talking about lenses and filters if for some reason you touch it accidentally or put a fingerprint don't try to smudge it with your finger further or any other cloth always use um, optical cleaner that's specifically designed for lenses and they usually also come with special cloth that doesn't leave any residue or fibers so don't uh, try to um, smudge it any further with your fingers um, that will make that will make it worse so uh, with uh, that covered another thing that um, we will be doing when uh, we're scanning things using turntables in general we support any type of uh, turntable that's off the shelf can trigger your camera and the whole system is designed to be basically in between your camera uh, and uh, your turntable we'll be using this wireless small genie mini 2 from SIRP that works great for smaller props for larger props out of the box we could use also a number of different turntables from Panko Imaging and others so when uh, using the rig there are different ways of um, going about scanning different objects um, in case of this prop the uh, best idea usually to have a loop of cameras around then flip the object do another loop then flip it again do another loop so ideally you want to have at least at least two perpendicular set of cameras around the object three is better and uh, to do that um, it also helps a lot well uh, when you scan you might run into issues with alignment especially using photogrammetry and complex materials like this when there are not enough stable points to align everything together without taking way too many photos so in that case we use a lot of helper objects and helper stands so basically boxes and uh, these sort of sleeves um, that, uh, that are mostly black uh, the reason they're black so that we don't create any bounce lighting and also try to make it as small as possible so that when you place the object there are no any extra shadows or occlusions created when you use when you do regular um, photogrammetry you can get away with just putting an object on a, a flat plane and just go around it but we need to shoot lights around the object as well so that light visibility is important so in this case it's mostly black with some pseudo random textures uh, this could be used to automatically detect and do all the scaling uh, it could be used as ground control things so that your object is automatically aligned and to scale um, in addition to that uh, for our photometric process we use the same markers to do all the additional color cal calibration and uh, things along those lines and in those cases you would basically uh, put an object do one loop and then the thing is that you either move the whole rig around at different inclinations or you flip the object so these are kind of like two different ways to do it when you use a single camera and a single turntable one thing to keep in mind is that when you flip the object you have to use a different support um, support box or support helper and for that reason we would have a different sets of these with different texture making sure that uh, there's no obvious overlap between them the reason is that if you don't do that 
then everything would be aligned to these textures mostly or with high probability and you have a lot of problems later on so when you flip something you have to switch that so and uh, for larger props there would be kind of different things for smaller macro photography and scanning also smaller things um, and um, that's uh, that in addition to that uh, we will be using standard color checkers from X-Rite the whole point of this is that all of us could agree on the same colors and the same intensities we use these to calibrate all the exposure uh, set up all exposure compensations as well as color calibration for the rig itself another thing that we would also need is the um, set at least uh, one mirror ball that's mostly needed to run the whole sequence see where all the lights are and make sure that the virtual lights are aligned so that all the highlights look the same it could be either small mirror ball like this or it could be any Christmas toy it doesn't have to be super accurate or like a perfect sphere it can have some imperfections that's not uh, that's not an issue usually the bigger the better because then you can adjust all those uh, light positions with more accuracy I like these types of uh, garden balls that's basically a glass ball with sprayed metal type of silver whatever aluminum what's on the inside so with this you can achieve a higher accuracy calibration so I think we covered most of the basic stuff and at this point we're ready to take our camera put it on the rig and start taking some pictures and after that in a series of videos we go through various processing steps until we get our final probe that you could see on Sketchfab as well so let's get to that